walking in the ways of Jesus, the leaving in place. Uh, I'd like to say a little prayer to begin this morning. Uh, God, we thank you for getting us here this morning on time, and uh, we pray that we can all enjoy the rest of the day. Amen. Uh, want to remember to uh, the, there are some blue prayer slips in the pews if you have any joys or concerns you'd like to have mentioned. Uh, be aware that the attendance books are in the center aisle, the red attendance books. And uh, I believe that's, that's all we need to know to get going. Thank you. do need to know one other thing. My name is Mark. I'm the pastor. Um, we're going to sing, and the words to the chorus will be on the screen, and that's really all you need to know. Bind us together. So why don't you remain seated just for a moment. Give me the words, Adam. You know this tune. It goes like this. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Sing it, let's sing it. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Let's take it up a step. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. And let's stand and sing it. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. God, we are blessed to be here and blessed with this good news that nothing separates us from you. Nothing. Because of Christ Jesus, your love is something that we never have to worry about losing. And so bind us together in this good news. Confident not only that you love us, but that you teach us how to love each other and to love this world that you have created. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Oh, have a seat. Candles. Let's do it. Let's light the candles. Yeah. There's another one coming.
Now, um, this is a Sunday that we celebrate all saints. I have a story to share with the children. I'm going to invite them to come down. Um, so come on down. And uh, I'm going to put that slide up, please, Adam. This is a story that's called Fear to Faith to Love. This is a Freddy and Frilla adventure. And so um, Freddy and Frilla, if you remember, were their brother and sister. Freddy's a year or two older than Frilla. And Freddy and Frilla, there wasn't very much that they were afraid of. They were not afraid to climb high mountains. That didn't bother them. They were not afraid to rock climb. I mean, even, even when it was hot, the sun was beating on them, even though it was dangerous, they weren't afraid to climb rocks. They had taken swimming lessons. They were not afraid of the water. And so they would go to the ocean. Of course, they'd have their life jackets on, but they would body surf or surf on a surfboard. Not afraid. Roller coasters, no problem. There was no roller coaster that they were ever afraid to go on. Skydiving, piece of cake. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, jumping out of an airplane, I'd be afraid to do that. They were not afraid. However, there is something, and it's hard to explain, but something that they were afraid of. Cemeteries. They didn't like cemeteries. They were nervous about them. They were afraid about them. Where they lived in their church, there was a cemetery right in the churchyard, and there was a fence all the way around the cemetery. And a lot of times, cemeteries will have fences around them. And Freddie and Frilla used to have this debate. When they would walk by the cemetery, Freddie would say to Frilla, you see this fence? You know what this fence is here for? This fence is to keep those people in there. The dead people need to stay in there. Any ghosts, anything like that, they need to stay. That, that fence means they've got to stay there. And Frilla said, don't be ridiculous. The reason for that fence is to keep people like us out. We, we should not go in there. It is too dangerous. And that's why that fence is there. They could not agree on whether the fence was there to keep the people that were in there in there or to keep the people that were out there out. But every time they had to walk by that fence, and they had to do that with some regularity, they were afraid. They were nervous, and they were always skeptical. Now we have to talk about something else. We have to talk about Miss Spencer's house. Miss Spencer, actually, she had been married but her husband died a long time ago. And so everybody just called her Miss Spencer. Everybody knew her. She lived in a, a simple house. She didn't have a lot of money, but she was very generous. And she loved children. Whenever she would see Freddie and Frilla, she would say to them, I am so proud of you. Look at how you're growing. You are growing up. I can't believe how fast you're growing. And you're so handsome, you're so beautiful. She just loved children and everybody loved her. Now there were a number of reasons. One reason was because she was a good cook. It seemed like any time that you went to Miss Spencer's house, she had chocolate chip cookies that were just out of the oven. Or if she would go to church, if she was in charge of bringing things for coffee hour, she would bring homemade glazed donuts which everybody loved. And if there was like a county fair or a church sale, she would bake pie and everybody wanted to have her pie. They would stand in line to get her pies. She loved people. She just loved people and she loved children. And then she died. And I'm gonna tell you, the whole town was sad. The whole town couldn't believe that Miss Spencer was gone. I mean, it wasn't just her cookies, but Freddie and Frilla talked about how she loved them and how much they loved her. Well, they had a memorial service, and everybody in town came to the memorial service. The church was full, and when the service was all over, there were a few people that stayed in the church afterwards, 
um, before they took the casket away, and they would go up and they would just lay their hand on the casket like they were saying goodbye, goodbye, Miss Spencer. We love you, we're gonna miss you. And Freddie and Phyllis' mom said, would you like to just go up and, and say goodbye? And they said, yeah, we'd like to do that. And so they went up, put their hand on the casket, and they said, goodbye, Miss Spencer. Goodbye. They're crying, they're sad. Yeah, well, they're kids. Then something, something happened that they did not expect. Their mother said, take my hand. We're going to go to the cemetery. And they said, wait, what? I don't think so. Freddie said, I don't think that's a good idea. Phyllis said, we're too young. And their mom said, no, you're, you're not too young anymore. You're old enough now to go to the cemetery. And so everybody left the church and some people carried Miss Spencer's casket and they went to the cemetery. And they walked into the cemetery and Freddie and Frilla were not excited. If, well, they were excited, but not for good reasons. Everybody gathered around and the pastor said some prayers. One of the things that the pastor said, he, he pointed out, he said, I want you to notice what's on Miss Spencer's tombstone, something that he had said in church. He said, nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, nothing. And he mentioned that again. And those, those words were written on Miss Spencer's tombstone. Well, when the service was over, everybody went away. And time passed. But something had changed. Every time Freddie and Frilla walked by the cemetery now, they forgot the fence. And they thought about Miss Spencer and how much she loved them and how much they loved her. And they would remember. They'd say, remember? Remember the cookies? Remember the donuts? Remember the pies? Remember the hugs? Do you know what? I can still remember my grandmother hugging me when I was a little boy, I can remember sitting on her lap and she would hug me, Grandma Allard. Boy, did she love me and did I love her. And then, one day they noticed, not for all the tombstones, but for a lot of them, there were flowers. There were flowers. And this gave them an idea. They said, how about if we get a flower, each of us, and we bring it to the cemetery, and we put it by Miss Spencer's grave. And so, that's what they did. Nothing can separate us from God's love. That's what it said on the stone. And they would, they would talk to Miss Spencer. They would say, Miss Spencer, we miss you, and we still love you. Because we are convinced Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even death. Let's say that together. For I am convinced that nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even death. Freddie and Frilla, I, don't, I can't explain it. They just weren't afraid of cemeteries anymore. Let's say a prayer together. God, thank you for the people we love and who love us. And you know, there are people who have loved us since we were tiny babies. And maybe some of those folks we don't even know. Maybe we don't remember them. Maybe they have died. But we're grateful for all the people who love us here with us now. Help us to love you and to love each other. And we pray in your name. Amen. Okay, you can go off to Sunday school carefully. Am I supposed to announce that? Okay, the Lego classes are together. Is that the S Yes. Okay. All right. Now, um, as is our tradition, we will spend a few moments, and Carol, I'm going to ask if you'd come forward. And we're going to remember, and we invite you to, um, if you feel so inclined, so let you can speak the name into the microphone. Let me um, lower it just a little bit.
sure it's on. We invite you to come forward um, if you feel led and uh, you can speak the name of the person. Bring a flower and um, Carol and Carol and Carol, <laughs> Carol Jean and Carol will arrange these for us. So let's do that also. And if you haven't, if you did have a prayer concern that you wanted to share and you haven't brought it forward yet, you can do that when you come forward now. My brother-in-law, Fred Wise. My husband, Jack Forcier. My husband, Ron Nato. My sisters, Janet, Janice, Cherry, and my parents. My uncle, Ed Wells. And my mom, Veronica Morrow. And my foster mother, Char Delier. Flower for my husband, Frank Way, and other little bouquet of flowers for my sister-in-law, Roberta Richardson, who passed this past week. My mother, Mary Ellen Smith, my father, George, my brother, Kenneth, my sisters, Dorothy, and Irene, God bless you. For my son, Rob, and for our parents. My nephew, Rob Purvey, and my niece, Stacy Adams. My mother and father, and my sister, Connie. My grandparents, my parents, and all of my family, my ancestors that go before us. Our parents, Bob and Elsa Carpenter, and Lorraine. My daughter, Mariah Pittman, and my parents. For my husband, Bill, and my parents, Curtis and Maxine. My family, my brother, John. For my cousin, Jay. My grandparents on both sides. My parents, Walker and Isabel Lindsay, and sister, Dorian Lindsay. My parents and all loved ones that passed before. For my mom and my grandparents. For my father, Hansa Lee, Lao Henry Hoyle.
our scripture readings for this morning. We'll start with a reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. I'm reading from the paraphrase by Eugene Peterson called The Message. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, this message of your salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. This signet from God is the first installment of what's coming, a reminder that we'll get everything God has planned for us, a praising and glorious life. That's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I'd think of you and give thanks, but I do more than thank. I ask, ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing him personally. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. All this energy issues from Christ God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule, and not just for the time being, but forever. Now please join me in praying Psalm 148. The words are found in the Red United Hem Methodist Hymnal on page 861 and 862. They will also be on the screen behind me, and we will be praying responsively. I'll read the light print and ask you to join me in praying the, do the dark bold print. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heavens, and all waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy winds fulfilling God's command. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people, Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their God. Praise the Lord. Our gospel reading is a reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, Saint Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. I'm reading from the New, the New Revised Standard Version. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, 
for that is what their ancestors did to false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In 1973, a metaphysical question became an explicitly legal one in the United States. Would it be legal for a woman to have an abortion? And if so, at what point in the pregnancy? Are there other factors that need to be taken into account? Like how old is the woman? What is the state of her physical or her mental health. But the sticking point <laughs> is this question. When exactly does bios, does biology, become human? That's the question. Now, this is not a new question. It's been debated in various circles for millennia. Aristotle believed that a male embryo became human 40 days after conception. Aristotle believed that a female embryo became human 80 days after conception. I know, I know. I, um, you know, sexism is not a new thing, is it? Creation story in our scriptures is a complicated story. We have two of them, and one of the stories says that um, God fashioned this creature out of clay, and when it was fully fashioned, God breathed into its nostrils the breath of life, and it became a living soul. And so in that instance, before it was human, it was fully formed. The word is nefesh. It's used over 780 times in the Hebrew Bible. And it, it is translated in so many different ways. It's translated creature, heart, person, soul, dead, mind, appetite, life. That one word is so dependent on context to try to make sense of it. But you know, um, there's another scripture, even though this passage in Genesis suggests that we're fully formed before we become human, then we read Psalm 139, right? God knits us together in our mother's womb. We're, we're created in the secret place says the scripture, leaving wide open the possibility of soul infusion in utero. If our scriptures were absolutely firm about this, we wouldn't have a problem. If the precise beginning of our catching a soul remains shrouded in mystery, well then, what about at the other end? When does life, when does soul leave us? Does it leave us? Does something happen at death which means that our essential humanity is gone? Does death deprive us of our essential being? 
I've mentioned the name of Raymond Brown to you before, a noted New Testament scholar. He wrote a one volume, a very thick one volume book called The Birth of the Messiah. And several years after that, he came out with this, this <laughs> monstrous two volume tome called The Death of the Messiah. And uh, Father Brown wrote th these words. He said, a number of people, a surprising number of people have asked if I plan a trilogy to conclude with the resurrection of the Messiah. I tell them emphatically, I have no such plans. I would rather explore that face to face. Now the full title of that two volume set is The Death of the Messiah from Gethsemane to the Grave. And friends, that's with the celebration of all saints. That's where it puts us. It brings us to the place somewhere between the grave and resurrection. Between the realities of this world and the hoped for world to come. The consistent thread that runs through the ancient pagan and Celtic practices of All Hallows' Eve situates this holy holiday at this time of year, a liminal time between autumn and winter. I don't know if the ancients set their clocks back, but as if to, you know, to just sort of emphasize, underscore the point, right? This time of confusion, this time when light and darkness give way to dusk, this time between seasons, this time between living and dying. That's what this feast is all about. As Christians, we recognize in the ancient superstitions the shadows of our own faith, this hope that claims us. Eugene Peterson paraphrases it so beautifully as he proclaims an energy issuing from Christ who is raised from death, raised from death, enthroned in deep heaven. That is, to my way of thinking, a powerful image, a powerful metaphor. An energy that emanates from a life both eternally present and tirelessly tenacious, subtle, so subtle, but unyielding. It is the power of love that will neither allow galaxies nor governments the authority to oppress or to abuse. I mean, they may do it, but they have no authority to do it. That's just an amazing metaphor, this notion that a Christ watches from deep heaven. <laughs> All Saints affords us this opportunity to take seriously our responsibility to remember to remember this Christ love is what unites us, not just for the time being, but for time memorial. A love that unites us to God, to all of creation, and to each other, to all the each others of our lives. I don't know about you, but boy, there are days when it takes faith to believe the poor will enjoy the kingdom takes faith sometimes to believe that the hungry will be fed. It takes faith sometimes to believe the disconsolate will ever know consolation. For some of us, it might be the question that we ask, will ever this grief be lifted from us? Will ever there be joy? Again, it takes faith sometimes to believe that, but that's why we come to the table. We come to this table surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We don't come because we understand. For all of the volumes written trying to explain the mystery of Eucharist, that's not ultimately what brings us here. I don't know that I've ever come to communion and said emphatically, oh, I get it. <laughs> that's not the experience I have. We come because we're hungry. Because every name mentioned out loud in this service or in the quiet of your own hearts, every name mentioned earlier, we believe is somehow at this table with us. I don't understand it. 
and of course somehow in ways that I will never comprehend. Jesus meets us here. Jesus meets us here with this cloud of witnesses where not only does forgiveness reign forever, but love endures forever. God whose love endures forever. God's love is not wasted on those who do not exist. God's love exists holding all of us in this mysterious tension of life here and now and forever. This energy that emanates, says Eugene Peterson, out of the Christ. This is the place where we celebrate with those here and those no longer with us this love that is forever in charge. Let's pray together. Let love be in charge, O oh God. Let each of us individually be constantly aware of what it is in us, the passions that arise in us that cause us to judge, to be dissatisfied when surrounded with blessing. Let this love fill us. Let love be in charge of who we are and what we hope for. Thank you for this feast, ancient, <laughs> but so deeply human, so deeply divine. Thank you for the table that draws us together, for the places we go that become holy ground because of our faith and the hope that sustains us. And we pray in Jesus' name. There's this um, very simple, but I think a beautiful hymn in the Red United Methodist Hymnal. It's number 712. I sing a song of the saints of God. Uh, a, a wonderful hymn that suggests to us that, you know, maybe because of God's love, we can become one too. So as we sing, uh, words will be on the screen, but it's also number 712. We'll give our gifts and our tithes.
invite you to join me in the prayers of the great thanksgiving. Responses will be on the screen, I, I hope, <laughs> and uh, we will pray together. So my friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good, right, a joyful thing to give thanks, eternal God, for you are constantly offering nourishment, hope, healing to your people. Even before we know we are hungry, you set a table laden with grace and extend the invitation for all who desire to, to come together and feast. And so we join all who gather to remember Jesus, those whom we see and those present with us but unseen by us as we raise our voices in praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Your church was birthed and bathed in the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Water and the Spirit wash over us to establish your covenant. And this table is the constant reminder of what was promised at our baptism. He took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said to them, even as he says to us now, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and giving it to his disciples said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for the forgiveness of sins. When you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your people gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. As they can be for us, the body and blood of Christ, so may we be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. These prayers for Arletha, that she know peace, trust, and comfort in her illness. Lord, in your mercy. For Dion's son-in-law, who had complications from surgery, for healing for him. Lord, in your mercy. For Sophia, who is facing difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer that Jack's surgery will go well on this coming Tuesday morning. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Prayers of healing for Jim. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For Brian and his family as they struggle with mental illness. Lord, in your mercy. And this prayer of praise to God for God's grace and God's love of us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And now let us pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church. All honor and glory are yours, eternal God, now and forever. 
And now with the confidence of children of God, we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. My friends, the body and blood of Christ are broken and shed for each of us. Amen. I'm going to ask the four people that I invited to help me with communion if you'd come forward now. This is an open table. Everyone is welcome. We'll invite you to come as you're ready. We also have gluten-free um, bread if needs be, so just ask me for that. We have a plate of that on the, on the altar table. So Jesus extends the invitation to us, and uh, we're hungry for God's love, whether we know it or not. We hunger for this love, and that's what this table is a sign of. This is where this is a subliminal place where heaven meets earth, um, where forgiveness reigns supreme, where Jesus reminds us of how loved we are. So you don't need to be a member of this church or any particular denomination. You can have a lot of faith or just a little faith. You can be absolutely certain or not sure at all. Everyone is welcome to come. I'll break a piece of the bread and then you can go to either side um, and either dip the bread in the chalice or take one of the smaller cups. On either side of the chancel area here, there are uh, places to put the empty cups in. And if you feel inclined, you can certainly pause at the altar rail and kneel for a moment as well. So um, let's come and break bread together.
soon. Hang on to it. God, we're grateful for the way in which memories of those who have loved us sustain us. And we're grateful, too, for the power of that love that binds us to them and to each other. A love that perhaps sometimes seems hidden in the deep heavens, but a love that is also... Um, living and pulsating deep within our own being. We're grateful for this news that nothing separates us, that we are bound together in love. Help us to remember that as we relate to each other and to the world around us. With gratitude for all that you do to nourish us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, several announcements that we want to share together um, next. So on this, we're, we're coming down the home stretch. We're coming down the home stretch on this, <laughs> on preparations for this. Um, and so this is the um, celebration on December 6th, 7th, and 8th, uh, Jesus of the People. And if you go to the next slide, these are folks that are so far participating. Um, I'm not going to read the slide for you, but um, the folks, the four, let me see, I guess I have to say that Jill Robinson will be speaking on Saturday, and then the other four, Dr. Henning Grant, uh, Bishop McLean Brown, Dr. Thomas, and Rabbi Salzman, those four so far are, are speaking at the panel on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. I invite you to come to that. And uh, Janet McKenzie is the artist, and she will be present as well. She will, I should say, she'll be speaking also on Saturday afternoon. So this, this piece of art has um, spurred so much conversation. And a line that um, I've read that, that I've heard Janet say is that we all should be able to see ourselves in the divine, that the divine is radically inclusive, holding no one at bay, keeping no one out. And so, um, her depiction of Jesus of the people as an attempt to, to give expression to um, a, a way of understanding Christ that perhaps is foreign to many of us, but, but includes so many <laughs> who might feel left out in any event. So that event is December 6th, 7th, and 8th, and several of you have already uh, offered to help, and we know who you are. And so um, for putting together what the uh, help opportunities are. I'll be in touch with the two of you, and, but if there are others of you that want to help, I'm not saying that you gotta be here the whole time, but if, you're, if you wanna help, we've got, uh, it's, it's um, Friday evening from five to eight, and then Saturday and Sunday afternoon, it's one to, one to five. And so you can come for all a part of that. Uh, I should also notice or note that if you go to the, either, I guess, forward to that other slide, uh, Dr. Arnold Thomas will be preaching at our worship service on Sunday, December the 8th at our 945 service. So an opportunity to give this gift to the community to um, offer Christ in a way that is radically inclusive. 
All right, that's the announcement that I have. Um, I know the youth spent the night, Friday night, here and uh, em engaged in a 12-hour fast. How did they do, Adam? They did great. They thought it was too short. They thought it was too short. They said, please, 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 Okay. Yep, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to those who were here yesterday helping to clean up as well. And June, you're going to make an announcement for us? Oh, thank you. I'll make that announcement right now. Prayer letters will be on the counter in the back of the church. Before you leave, we invite you to sign it. We, we write these letters when requested to do so, and we continue to hear from people how meaningful it is. You don't need to know the person personally to sign the letter, all right? Please sign the prayer letters. And our closing hymn, I'm going to go to the organ as June makes this announcement. It's, uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Ushers. Um, did you want to say something about this? Okay. I'll let... I'll let you jump ahead. And before you do it, our closing hymn is number 721 in the Red Hymnal for all the saints. I'm going to go play the organ. Okay. This is great. Um, I have done a very poor job organizing so far. I've given myself a lot of room for improvement, so I appreciate all the help, including that this is here. Uh, later this afternoon, about 1 o'clock, I will send out the announcement of uh, the sign-up to the people I know. If people have not reached out to me, if I don't have your phone number, if I don't have your name, if you want to be part of ushering, let me know. So I'm going to send out this email with a sign-up list through the end of the year. Um, some people have reached out to me for uh, looking farther forward, and I've got your names, and we'll, uh, we'll get to the springtime after we get the end of the year filled out. Thanks. Oh. Yeah, that's close to my phone number. Thanks, but not exactly. Um, 279-1924. But come find me at, in the back. Thanks. I'm still practicing using the microphone, so um, I was given this book that's The Soul of the Octopus. If anybody is interested in reading it, it is so full of knowledge, I don't even know if a set of encyclopedias could hold it all. Um, and also, I would like to say with God's help, I will be having the After Fair Knitting Sale next Sunday. And I also would like to, again, thank all the youth that helped us uh, yesterday with the cleanup. The kitchen looks a lot better than when it did when we started. Thank you so much.
Pray for God's blessing. With gratitude for the saints, living and dead, the ones sitting right next to us here. With gratitude for the saints we will encounter this week, for how they love us and challenge us. We ask now, God, for the blessing of that boundless energy that the author of Ephesians writes about. Bless us with this deep faith from this Christ who lives in us, reminding us of the eternal nature of your love. Send us forth into the world with joy to do your bidding, to be your people. Send us into the world this week in our jobs and in our homes, in our church and in our community to live the good news, to express God's grace and love in all that we do, say, and think. Bless your people for the work that awaits us, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's greet each other in Christ's name.